What's happening you legends? Today's episode is going to be epic because we're upgrading the audio in my 120 series Prado but it's a Sunday so let's head on off to my parents and I'll tell you a bit more about it. I would have loved to have done this at home but my complex doesn't allow us to work in our cars so my parents place it's gonna have to be. So let's have a quick look at what this install today entails. So in the front doors we're going to be running a set of 6x9s from JBL. Those are 70 watts RMS, a set of 6 and a half for the rear door speakers, 40 watts RMS. And then we're going to be running tweeters in the front from Nakamichi with the splitter. And those are rated for 10 watts RMS, which should be plenty because uh, we've got an 85 watt RMS per channel. And it's a 4 channel amp over here. So this should be plenty to power that and they should thump pretty well. In addition to that... I've got some sound deadening that I want to put in the doors because we're going to be putting quite a bit of power to these door speakers. I think this is definitely going to help even though the car is pretty damn well insulated to start off with. Stick around till then because I've got a little surprise that I haven't shown you guys yet. Now when I bought the car it already had a touch screen in it. Let me show you what that looks like. Ah, one of these, it's an audio bank, nothing fancy but it does have Bluetooth and obviously RCA out and I'd have to lift the passenger seat but someone already installed an amp in this car but it was a two channel to power a sub and we're going to be removing that putting in my amp so I don't have to fiddle with any of that wiring there there should be RCA's there ready but I do need to run four speaker cables up to just behind the head unit so we can power the doors using the original factory wiring. Should be a pretty easy install, so stick around. We're going to have to modify the speaker brackets, the ones that are in the door currently. Cut the old speakers out. I saw a couple videos on that on YouTube. So hopefully that goes to plan. And then by the end of this video, this little Prado should be bumping. These are quite easy to remove. we just got to pop under here. There we go, there's one. One cover out and under this. Plug on the back, nice and easy. Okay, and there's one behind here. There we go. And we gotta pop this little clip in there. That's pretty chilled. Don't forget this little cover there. And then all of these just unscrew. And there. That's pretty much everything that holds the door on. The only other thing we've got to do is pop the clips from underneath. One of these will do. Ah, there's the front clip. There we go. Now the door card lifts up. You won't be able to remove the door card until you pull the uh, plugs out and undo the Ah, oh, there we go. And undo the lock mechanism. There you have it. Door card off. There's our nasty ass 6x9 that's like 17 years old. They actually still pump pretty decently, but uh, since we were going to amp them, I thought let's upgrade them. Woo, this thing hasn't been moved in its life. There we go. So let's go ahead, put this next to our new one so I can show you the difference. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> this does have a tweeter attached. If these start to distort, I will uh, disconnect them at the bottom. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave them attached. But you can see here, I need to use this original bracket. This is going to feel so weird, but we need to now cut the speaker out of here and then cut these plastic pieces. I know you can buy these brackets off the market, but it is a 17 year old speaker, so. We may as well uh, just cut it up and use it for our purpose. <sighs> okay, this really doesn't feel right, but uh, it's just going to have to happen. Poor speaker. Well, it served a good life, man. It served a good life. Okay. Our surrounds off. Now we're just gonna have to go in and cut all these plastic bits. Okay, I did the snipping bit off camera. I managed to find a pair of these in my dad's garage, but I am on limited tools, so at a later stage I'll pull these out and I'll use a, a file to just grind these down. But for now, that's gonna work. Let's see how our speaker fits there. We do have some clearance issues there with uh, that surround, so I'm gonna have to trim it down just a bit more. Okay, it's definitely gonna work. We've just got to. Uh, 
Let's see if I can get that out of there. I just need to go and grab a file. I'm just going to go buy a file quick because uh, I don't have yet my parents, but just going to file these around a little bit more just so that fits a little bit more snug. And then I also need to get self tappers that will do the distance here. We need to bridge that gap. I know it's not the most ideal way to do it, but it's the way we're going to get it done. At least I'm busy getting the hardest part out of the way. From here on out, once these are fitted, it should be a relatively easy install. Uh, that should do it. Okay, I asked my dad, apparently we do have files at home, so I just got uh, the sort of bare necessities. Let's go and fit these speakers. Okay, we've got some progress. I managed to file down the edges. It's now fitting freaking awesomely. That just pops in there. So what I'm going to do now is put some double-sided tape along the edge. We'll push it in and then run the soft tappers all the way through. Doesn't need to be perfect, but uh, it's going to turn out pretty damn sweet like that. Just to make a nice little seal around the surrounds there. Keeping in mind it is an open back speaker, so it's not that it needs to actually be a perfect seal like you would a sub on a sealed box. I'm just going to see where that screws are roundabout going to go over there and then pull the speaker out, drill a little pilot hole with uh, the drill. Whew, that shade is welcomed, but it's uh, finally time for us to mount the speaker into the surround. So, double sided tape out of here. Then, this is the top and I want the JBL logo facing down, so we're going to just do like that. Oh, magnet protrudes a little bit there. There we go. Oh yes, that is fantastic. Now while we're inside, we're going to take the original uh, plug here and we're just going to solder it up so that the speaker's wired in with the factory OEM plug. Only time I'm going to use the speaker grill is uh, just to make sure that I don't kill the speaker on the workbench. Here's my final result, the original plug, wired in there, there's a little clip in the uh, actual speaker itself, so just hook that up, and this is ready to fit to the car. That's good, that's good, and that's good. First one's in. In like that. Yes. So we're just going to rinse and repeat on the other side, but we need the tweeter sorted for the front doors, so let's go ahead and fit those. So here's our door card over here, you can see all the insulation that they actually put stock. And there's our tweeter, so we're going to unclip uh, the plug over here, undo the screws, and get that bad boy out. That's what our stock tweeter looks like, and our new Nakamichi tweeters are a little bigger, but uh, they'll work perfectly. I'm just going to literally place them there, and installed with it will be that uh, double sided tape that comes with the tweeter. That one over there. I must say, the stock tweeter is actually quite a beefy unit, but we're just going to desolder that for the plug. And uh, I've got that double sided tape there. We'll plonk that there and maybe put a bead of um, that uh, single sided foam just so that when it rests up against the speaker, there's no vibration. A little hard to focus on it, but with a quick test fit, I actually don't need that foam. Everything's going to go on just perfect. One door is officially wired in, so we've got our tweeter over there. The splitter over there, I've just, uh, we've got a bunch of extra cable that I've just cable tied up. I might shorten that at a later date. And the original plug, so the original plug goes into here, you'll see it splits into four. It goes up there and then it links back down and that supplies the other speakers. After you put this uh, switch back, you're going to have to reprogram it. So you just put it down for a few seconds, up for a few seconds, and all the auto functions will work on the main door. You haven't broken it, I promise. <laughs> One door done. Second tweet is in and these flush mount side cutters, they are the bomb diggity. Check this. Oh, damn. Shot of it in the door. They're looking fresh. Now, as per usual with this kind of a build, it's taking way longer than I thought it would. But I want it done right. It is a Sunday, so I'm going to go have Sunday lunch. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go into the workshop, wire in the amp, and we can actually make this thing bump. Ah, a nice clean lens. What's happening guys? It's Monday, we're back at the workshop, let's continue with this install. The weather today is not really playing ball, but uh, it's all good. So let's sort out the back speakers. First things first, I've already pulled the door card off. 
I've got the speaker out. We'll modify that shortly to fit our new six and a half inches. But while I'm here, I wanted to show you guys. So from about here to here, there is already sound deadening in it uh, from the factory. It does help. Obviously, uh, we want a little bit more than that. So I've gone ahead and cut a strip that I can actually fit through the speaker hole to get it in there. That way I don't have to remove these plastics. I'm just gonna go in. I wanna go below this cross brace here. I'm gonna clean up really nicely. Obviously dust can get in the door um, through where the glass slides up and down. So we need to clean in there properly and then get the sound deadening fitted. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dirty in there. And uh, as far as cutting the insulation, just to measure, I just went in there with my hand. It was about one schwacker thick. If you uh, ride bikes, you'll know the width of a schwacker. So took one of those bad boys. Oh yes, and there it is. Perfect. <laughs> Trying my best to get a good camera angle for you guys, but I've just cut this down to size a little bit. We've taken about that much off, but what I'm gonna do is uh, clean up top and put this a little bit higher. I tried to film putting the first one in, but the camera angle was actually terrible. Anyway, we've got this square here that I wanna get in. Just there, hopefully you guys can see that quite nicely. I'm gonna peel the backing. It's already nice and clean in there. Put it that way. Right there. That's it. Get it on. So there's our end result and our other piece is in there all the way down there and in the rear here there's our nasty ass stock speaker and what we're going to be upgrading to so i'll show you guys exactly what i did here it's the same as the other speakers we're just going to trim all of these just using a set of side cutters for this one there we have it exact same as the big speakers You'll see the rear door speakers have this like uh, cardboard fitting on here. So we're actually just going to pull that off. I'm using a set of uh, gas pliers and uh, if you just slowly work your way around it, you'll see it starts to lift up. And that'll just come straight off once you've gotten all that adhesive loose. That's what it looks like without that cardboard on. And uh, when we mount the new speaker now, you'll see um, the soft tappers will actually go through this uh, piece of plastic here and bed into the bottom of the mount over there so these actually work really really well for this just like the front speakers I've put double sided tape there so for this the stock screws work really well just a matter of doing that pilot hole and they'll go right in just wired into the factory plug let's go fit this bad boy So both doors now have their speakers, that one there, that one there, well all of the doors have them but I'm just talking about the rear doors there. I've managed to pull the uh, seat up and there is our mono block that was in the car but yeah I'm going to be obviously replacing that with the uh, 85 watt RMS per channel. Okay initially I wasn't the biggest fan of these uh, big cable ties holding the amp in but I think if I run that uh, single sided foam on the back end of this and then I clip it up it should be cool I should be able to actually reuse these ones that are there as far as wiring goes we got uh, RCA splitter so we're just gonna run uh, all the channels into all four and then all the tuning will actually be done on the side of the amp there um, and not on the head unit the little fun bit of tuning will be done on the uh, head unit but everything else will be done here including how much power is going to go between the front and the rear speakers on the other side we've got our power our um, remote and then uh, the ground is a little short I can only put that in once it's back on the seat we've reached the point that I need to get the four speaker wires from the amp all the way up to behind the head unit so that uh, we can use the original wiring but if you're installing a radio I'm going to show you how to take out all these uh, covers clips and all the bits so that you can access that radio I prefer to use plastic tools it just uh, helps you not scratch the dashboard and that sort of stuff but uh, you can use a flat screwdriver just be very careful There we go, there's our first one out, same thing on this side, there we go, I don't know why but the camera stopped recording there, this one just pulls out along with this one, and then there's just a plug, ah there we go, 
at the back for the hazards on the right one and for the passenger light or the seat belt light on this side and this one is also out that we can just leave hanging down there there's a bolt this side one at the top as well as far as i understand they come out as one unit i think this top cover is also going to come out oh, that's coming with it ah. the unit's out obviously if you're going to be changing the uh, radio itself you can go deeper and you just undo the brackets on the side and then you've got access but i don't need to do that i just need to now find where the stock wiring harness is which i believe is this one over here and we are going to be cutting this and joining it so first thing i've done here is just cut the original harness uh, from the radio i've labeled everything so you'll see rear right um, with its colors all that good stuff and then as far as my own harness goes i've also labeled this so that i know exactly once i pull it through the dash that this links up to the other end that is also labeled just before i go in and tape up the rest of the harness all my speaker cables are now connected they are correlating with the ones for the uh, door speakers and they are still labeled by the amp over there it's a bit blurry but anyway um so i'm just going to tape this up and then clip it back into the harness here and that's going to be sweet and then i just want to neaten up this mess that the previous installer did on the radio we're almost there i've got to quickly assemble the car at the speed of light because i need this to get home but uh the rca is not feeding back from the uh i think it's a high like a high low converter or something um i'm going to be pulling that out running a new rca so i'm back where i was yesterday let's get into it so i've managed to get two sets of rca cables one for the front one for the rear and i've just taped it up nicely we're going to run it back up under the dash so I ended up opting for the cable tie method, but I did put um, that uh, single-sided foam on the back. It actually is holding really, really well there, just on the uh, sort of uh, seat frame there. All the wiring neatly away, tucked into a harness. The uh, power wires come into the floor here, so that's pretty cool. And the ones for the RCA and speakers will tuck in here. Uh, once that seat's down, I'm going to tuck it in right next to it, and it will still have uh, a space for the seat to go back and forth but she's looking pretty cool oh and anytime i'm putting a seat back and uh, i'm dealing with the safety equipment thing i always put a little bit of blue lock tight just to make sure that these don't vibrate loose so just when i thought i was done with the sound install i've got a little surprise let me show you guys managed to pick up this little bad boy so it's a little 18 inch sub it's got its own little amp so everything uh, goes through that nice and easy um, since i built this deck on the back the deck is for sleeping i just uh, lower the uh, two rear seats just flat and then a double mattress fits in there so i figured well since i've got this deck in now and it's been built to stay in the vehicle i can actually hide the little sub away so let me show you where i want to put it so my idea is to go under this deck here and the sub will sit there and i think i'm going to have it firing sort of at me that way so uh long ways in here I just went and ran a power cable, remote cable and RCA from the, under the driver's seat and we've got a ground um, from this uh, little connector there. So that should plug right in and uh, should actually help it bump a little bit better. So it's a nice to have, not a need to have. The door speakers actually bump pretty damn good by themselves but when you start making bass through door speakers obviously you start to rattle your window mechanisms and that sort of stuff and it compromises the sound just a little bit so like this we're going to be making bass in the boot and uh, the door speakers i'm just going to put that uh, low pass filter a little higher just so that they're playing a little bit less of the low 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 stuff what's quite nice about the setup this amp actually detaches from the sub itself it's just got two sort of pins that lock it in it clips on the back here and then takes those two screws over there so pretty sweet uh, it makes it easy to wire it in. I don't know if I'll be sort of bolting it down for now. It should actually just be uh, fine because the top of the deck will actually hold the top of the sub there. So let's go ahead and put this in. Oh, please excuse how messy the rest of the boot is, but uh, yeah, there's our install. So all the wiring's there, nice and neat. Uh, I've got a bungee keeping it in the corner there. And uh, yeah, from the outside, you wouldn't be able to see a thing because the seat clicks there and there. Nice and tucked away. Now I need to find something that bumps on music that I've paid for. Obviously, if I just put any old song from YouTube music, I'm going to get a copyright strike. So let me go find a cool song.
Well, there you have it. That's the sound and soul of my Prado. This is hitting the mids, the highs, and the lows. I'm really happy with it. It's ticking all my boxes. It doesn't use a lot of power, so I can run other things in the car as well, especially since I'm going to be sort of touring with this car. So when we go to races and that sort of stuff, this will be the main vehicle. And if you're just curious why there's some 4x4 content on this channel, well, you probably want to watch this evolving video over here. And if you don't want to watch that, check out my top speed vid. Have a sick one.